I think one of the biggest burns is the is a hiring mm-hmm. and b retention, like we're talking about, because because then the re- the lack of retention of the employee then causes you to have to go back into hiring, which is daunting, as we know, if you don't have tools and systems around how to make that less daunting and getting the right person on the bus. Right. So everyone just rolls their head. Like you talk about hiring and it makes, it makes all the op, you know, we're in the mastermind it makes people skin crawl because they know the 10 steps that are going to take to put potentially putting someone back on the bus. And that might be the wrong person, but they're going to spend weeks and months trying to see if that person is right. Right. And ultimately decide and, or that per- either they will decide or that person might decide that they don't like this seat and they then leave and the process starts over again. And that is just too much sometimes for people to cope with. So this is, this is key cog for me that changed with culture. And it's key cog period. Remember yeah. I was talking about the yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah. This is, this is the hardest part of advancing your business. And Craig, it goes back to you. We talk about vision. So much is predicated on getting this right because it will make the vision of what you're trying to do so much happen so much faster with so much less, you know, that's why we go through it on the bulletproof pathway. It's not that we stuck a bunch of shit up on the board. And it's like, go through this pathway. It works. It's get your, get your head, right. Get your vision, right. Get it planned. Then start build implementing your, your team implementation. Then start look for learning how to hire, right. Building it. And so it, this isn't hocus pocus. It, we, yeah. it's, it's a methodology as Dwight likes to say. Yeah. The problem is though, it's like we talked about before. It's like the work, it's just the five easy steps. You know, people don't want to do the work. And, and even with my own physical fitness, I, don't I would feel like that's true, Craig. I, I think that there's, there is a, at the very first level of decision of what type of practice you want. There's so much that people don't even look when you at. you say uncover. people don't want to do the work, unpack that a little bit more. So, because look, let's be honest. High school was hard. College was hard. To get into dental school was hard. People are willing so, to do work. It's just they yeah, like Sutter said they want a shortcut. They, yeah. So what well, I why? think is because that because they didn't have a shortcut in getting so, to where they so, are. So look, I went like I went to Dwight's practice. I went to another practice all in one Monday. I saw five locations. Right, guys. Yep. And each one was Wait, break so, down of which. So you saw two of Dwight's. So, and- so I saw two of Dwight's, two of Trey's, which are, you know, both of Dwight's were different. Both of Trey's were different. And then I saw an entirely different model, an entirely different owner and an entirely different model. Okay. Outside of people being treated for their teeth, there was absolutely nothing similar about their businesses absolutely. whatsoever. Great yeah. point. And I think really? that people that are listening are like dental practice. That's it. It's yeah. a dental practice and it is not. Yeah. Think of it as a restaurant. All restaurants will get you full. But look at look at the disparity in great business analogy. models. Some analogy. people need to get Chick-fil-A because they have four minutes. Yeah. And some people want they're celebrating their anniversary. Both restaurants and people are not willing to do the work to describe the new restaurant they wish to create that this makes is my them favorite feel. analogy you've ever done, by the way. So that that makes them, you know, it's like we're all chefs. A lot of all appreciation artists. from Pete. Yeah, it, it didn't go right, unnoticed. Though, though. But I just want—I don't want to lose my train of thought. So it's like, as Dennis, we're all chefs. We're all artists. And they say, "How did you build your restaurant?" Yeah. Well, you know, I wanted blah blah blah. And what 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 what? How many square feet was it? Well, what are you serving? Are you hot chicken sandwiches? Are you filet yeah. mignon? What are you doing? And we all don't want to do that work. Because someone along the way, maybe it was, you know, our supply house or something like that, but they told you dental office should be four operatories and you need 1.3 of this and 1.4 of that. It's not yeah. a formula. Yeah. Yeah. What's the yeah. formula for a restaurant? If you go to your restaurant tour buddies, and I have several, say, how many square feet did you decide upon for your restaurant? Well, I'm a coffee shop. Oh, I didn't know you are a coffee shop. I thought you were an empanada store. No. So it's, they're totally different. They're totally, yeah. completely different. And yeah. what we get is we get Dennis just saying, I like the, I've never been to your restaurant. I've never eaten your food. I've never experienced anything about it, but I've heard it's kind of cool. I saw the pictures on Google. How'd you build that? And that's the work that people don't want to do. 